From UFOs to ghosts and psychic powers, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now and learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Whether it's your neighborhood credit union or a transnational institution, banks are crucial to the economy. There are many types of banks, but each depends on trust. Banks accept deposits and use their account holders' funds to create loans, empowering millions of people to buy houses, to start businesses, or send their children to school. International banks offer similar services to foreign clients, which could be individuals, companies, or entire governments. Intergovernmental organizations Organizations like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund provide services geared toward development and stabilization of the global economic order. Given all the recent banking crises, it's no surprise that banks have critics. Often depicted as corrupt, lacking oversight, or simply disingenuous, banks from Iceland to Iowa have picked up a tarnished reputation. But to conspiracy theorists, banks are more than just mismanaged. They're actually running the world. Here's where it gets crazy. It's not likely that any one group runs the world, but banks certainly own a lot of it. In 2011, three complex system theorists at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology conducted an interesting experiment. They analyzed the control network of transnational corporations to see how this structure affects the global market. Starting from a list of over 43,000 transnational companies, the group cross-referenced ownership pathways, essentially asking who owns what and how. The results were disturbing. This international network is shaped like a bow tie, and at its core, a group of 147 organizations controls over 40% of the total wealth in the system. Many of these 147 companies are banks. To protesters in Greece and the Occupy movement, this is not news. Conspiracy theories about banks vary. Some cite the Illuminati or other secret societies. Others may focus on fears of a one-world government or nefarious plans to depopulate the globe. In Confessions of an Economic Hitman, author John Perkins claims that organizations like the IMF and World Bank ordered him to force developing countries into bad decisions for loan money, including selling resources and industries to private, often foreign owners. Even banking employees have criticized international lending practices. Nobel Prize winner and one-time World Bank economist Joseph Stiglitz condemned the free market fundamentalism of his former employers. Corruption is also an ongoing problem. Crooked transactions such as the Libor trading scandal show the danger that can occur when bank employees can use their influence to swindle customers for personal gain. Yet these criticisms don't prove that international banks are part of some arcane cabal. The Swiss scientists don't believe the core group is part of some conspiracy. According to George Sujihara, a systems expert familiar with the research, this concentrated influence structure is common in nature. While the researchers don't believe the core group controls the world, serious concerns remain. Could this group of 147 companies weld political power? Here the scientists are divided. One believes that there are too many groups in the core to collude or sustain a consensus. Another believes they may compete but may also act together toward common interest. Politicians in the United States and abroad have called for more transparency in the banking industry, yet the murky world of international finance is both complex and difficult to navigate. While there may not be proof of an international banking conspiracy, the lack of oversight and enormous concentration of power creates more than enough opportunity to hide the stuff they don't want you to know.